This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm going to tell you two very brief Devei Torah that apparently contradict each other. And uh, I'll let you think about if you can reconcile the two. Okay, so uh, Parsha's boy, we have the Parsha Makas Bechayros. So there's very interesting halach when it comes to Pidyon Aben that the Ramah says in Simon Shin Hei that anyone here did Pidyon Aben? Anyone here had a Pidyon Aben? Shui? Benzi, okay. What? You're a Bechar. You were you Nifta? You were redeemed? When I was in Yeshiva, um, we were learning the Sugi in Kedushin, and a guy woke up that he never had Pidyon Aben. The guy was like, uh, he was from the former USSR. They, had, they literally carried in a guy who's a big guy, and they did a Pidyon Aben on him. So... Anyway, so the Ramah says, That the father cannot use a shliach to do the mitzvah for him. In other words, he has to bring the kid himself to the kayin. He can't appoint a shliach. So the shach asks, why can't he appoint a shliach? We, we hold, that shliach You're allowed to have a shliach do a bris for you, right? You could appoint a shliach to do the bris for you. Why can't you appoint a shliach to do pinyan haben? So the chsam soifer in his chuvas in Simon Reish Sadi Gimel, says a very interesting thought. He says, it's not that you're not allowed to use a shliach, but it's better not to. Why is it better not to? There's no Indian in Kala Kula. It's better not to use the shliach, even though mitzvah boy yoiser mi b'shluchai, but still we don't say it's better not to use the shliach. But the, the Chassam Sarbis says like this, that since the purpose of Pinyin Aben is to commemorate Makas Bechayrois, that the firstborn were sanctified because the Rebunisham himself jumped over their homes. So therefore to commemorate it that it was and we know by Makas Bakharis, at Anivaloy Shliach, Anivaloy Malach, Anivaloy Sarf, Ani Huvaloy Akhar, it was Ribanisham Khvadivayatsmay. So therefore in order to commemorate Makas Bakhirois, that Hashem did it himself, you're supposed to do Pinyin Aben yourself. Okay? That's the Khsam Soifer's Vartara. So what's the contradiction? What's the seeming contradiction? The seeming contradiction comes from Avart, from his father-in-law, Rabbi Kivager. What does Rabbi Kivager ask? Rabbi Kivager has two questions. We know that when it comes to Pinyin Aben, who does a Pinyin Aben? Who do you have to be paideh? Firstborn of the father or firstborn of the mother? mother. Firstborn of the mother. mother. Firstborn of the mother, Petarechem. Only firstborn of the mother has Kedusha. If it's not the mother's firstborn, for example, let's say the mother previously had a miscarriage, it's not the Petarechem, you don't do Pinyin Aben. Even though it's the father's firstborn, it's not the mother, you don't do the firstborn of the father, you do firstborn of the mother. So the question is, if the purpose of Pinyin Aben is to commemorate um, Makas Bechayrois, so which Bechayrim were killed in Mitzrayim, both the firstborn of the father and the firstborn of the mother? So which Jewish Bechayrim should have been sanctified? The firstborn of the father and the firstborn of the mother. So why by Pinyin Aben do you only do firstborn of the mother and not the firstborn of the father? And another question Rabbi Kivager asks is, we know that the night of uh, Makas Horus, no Jew is allowed to leave their home. Why? Because... Uh, once the mashchus was given permission to destroy, so he's not going to distinguish between the tzaddik and the rasha, so everybody had to stay indoors and put the little red thing on their doorpost in order to indicate that it was a Jewish home. So uh, the question is, what do you mean the mashchus? There's no mashchus. I thought it was Hashem. No shliach, no, no malach. It was Hashem b'chvoi loy saraf. What's the whole business of the mashchus not being able to distinguish between the Jewish homes and the non-Jewish homes? So Kivager says like this. Rabbi Kivager says a, a beautiful idea. The only thing is, it seems to contradict the Chassam Seifer. Rabbi Kivager says, it's brought down, first of all, in the Sefer Chut HaMashulash, which is the biography of Rabbi Kivager. It's also brought down in Rabbi Kivager's Chedush HaMam, Masech the Baba Kama. Rabbi Kivager says like this. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu was not necessarily needed for Makas B'chayrois. Because uh, what do you need Hashem for? You, a Malach could do it. There was one thing you needed Hashem for. To tell the difference between firstborn of a father and firstborn of a mother, in other words, let's say you have, to determine who's the firstborn of a mother, you don't need God for that. Any angel could go to the hospital and see which kid came out first from the mother. Right? That's like black and white. So that you could use a malach for. What's not so clear is who the firstborn of a father is. Right? Because you need to be able to distinguish which droplet of the father was the first one. Nobody can know that. No human being, no angel. That you needed God for. 
So to determine firstborn of the mother, every hospital knows that. To determine firstborn of the father, you know, as the, the joke, there's a very complicated day somewhere, right? Father's Day is a very difficult day in certain locations in New York. You need God to determine the firstborn of the father. Only God knows who the firstborn of the father is. So it's like this. It says Rebbe Kivegar, when it comes to the firstborn of the father, who killed the Egyptian firstborn? God. Therefore, for God, it's not a miracle. And since Hashem is able to clearly determine who the firstborn is, it wasn't really miraculous that the Jewish firstborns were saved because since Hashem is doing the Makkah, He knows very clearly who the firstborn of the, who the Egyptian is and who the Jew is. So you didn't, you didn't need God, um, you didn't need any kind of special miracle to save the Jewish firstborn from the father because that was done by God Himself. The, the Malach, though, was, was used and could be used for the firstborn of the mother. Ah, now with a Malach, you need a special miracle for the Malach to save the Jewish firstborn. So Rukhi Vegas says like this, Pidyan Aben is only for the firstborn of the mother because it was only a miracle that God saved the, it was only a miracle that the angel did not kill the Jewish firstborn of the mother because that was done through the Malach. What the Rebani Shalom did was he saved the Jewish firstborn. That's not a miracle. God could easily determine the difference between a Jewish firstborn and an Egyptian firstborn. So it says Rabbi Kivegar, that's the reason why it's only firstborn of the mother, because it wasn't a miracle by the father, because that was God. And that's the reason why you needed the blood. The blood was not to save you from God, the blood was to save you from the mashchis. So the mashchis took care of the, the firstborn of the mother, and God took care of the firstborn of the father. The only problem with this is it's a direct contradiction to what we learned from the Chassam Soifer. Chassam Soifer says the reason why you should do Pidyan Aben yourself is because God Himself was jumped over the Jewish homes. Yeah, but you're not doing Pidyan Aben on the homes that God jumped over because that's firstborn of the Father. You're not doing Pidyan Aben firstborn of the Father according to the Rebbe Kivegar. According to Rebbe Kivegar, you're doing Pidyan Aben on the firstborn of the Mother, and that Rav Hashem didn't do. So Rav Hashem didn't do that. You should be able to use the shliach. So the two things we said from Rabbi Kiva and the Chassam Sefer, they seem to argue on each other. Have a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.